The following is an LCTV sports presentation. Lincoln College Basketball on LCTV is made possible by Grau Chevrolet Buick and Lincoln, ME Realty, and by the State Bank of Lincoln. Hi, and welcome inside, back inside the Jack Dean Nut Arena where we are set to go for the Consolation Championship Contest to see who gets that final spot to go to the national tournament and punch their ticket to South Dakota. Will it be the eight seed LCU or will it be the Crowley's or Crowley's Ridge of the seven seed as well? We'll find out here real shortly in the next 40 minutes of who's gonna come out on top. Both teams coming off a, a tough loss for those two, especially for LCU. LCU, the eight seed coming in riding high. They beat the one seed Washington Adventist just on Friday in the opening round. But then, and they led probably 37 minutes of that first first half and the second half and that entire ball game against College of the Ozarks but Ozarks just too good down the stretch almost shot 60 percent in that second half and really took it to LCU in that stretch I'm Nick Jackson I'm joined by Jared Glassford and he'll be with us shortly in just a few moments as we get to LCU but in the last game for Crowley's Ridge though however they lost 81 to 50 against your Lincoln College Lynx in that ball game and like I said they just ran into a tough a good team at the wrong time for Crowley's Ridge, they have a good talent team. They're a very high scoring team as well, so it should be interesting to see how these two fare today. We have Bo, Bo Robinson, Roberson on one side for Crowley's Ridge, and then we have Garrett Isles on the other. Those are the two to watch for in tonight's contest as I believe we're gonna send it down to Jared here on his thoughts here for the LCU game tonight. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Um, talking to Coach Isles before a game to get a little quote, uh, he said tonight we have to focus on rebounding the basketball. Gave an emphasis. They got some size, Crowley's Ridge does. And he says on top of that, they're going to stick to what they know. Last game they played against Crowley's Ridge, they actually hit 23 three-pointers. So they're looking to continue that hot streak, stick what they know, and rebound the basketball. And things should be looking good for your Red Lions. I couldn't agree with you more in that game. I want you to talk to me a little bit about Garrett Isles, the last game. He did have 27 points, five boards, eight of 15 from the field. Seven of those were from behind the arc. Talk to me a little bit. Can he do that again today? And will somebody else step up for the Red Lions? Oh, absolutely. He's capable of going off at any point. Yesterday, kind of one of the few offensive highlights for LCU in that one. One of the few people in double figures. The last game, he had a huge game. And last time they played Crowley's Ridge, you saw A.J. Field go off for 31 points. And he's been kind of quiet so far in this tournament. Coach Isles talked about he's one of the people that they need to get the ball in the hands of. they got to get him hot, especially in this one. All right, well, thank you, Jared. Again, we're getting set to go here between LCU and Crowley's Ridge. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and tip-off coming your way next on LCTV. I don't remember how it started. Go to Our back and forth. It always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. And the salary. Oh my god, yes. I right? mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that. 
Shaman. <laughs> These are cool. Did you, um, what did Ball back inside the Jack D. Nut Arena where we are set to go first. And as promised, it's the starting lineups here. First with the visiting LCU on the scoreboard wearing the road black uniforms. No change in the lineup for Coach Isles' group as Garrett Isles rounding out the senior here, the hometown hero, gets them to start once again. Lavelle Harris, the freshman out of St. Louis, once again in the starting lineup. Look for him to have a big game as well. And Cornelius Walhorn once again in place of Nate Parks, who I believe is dressed here tonight. We'll have more on that in just a moment from Jared. But again, after the Lawhorn, it is A.J. Field and then Caleb Walters out of Springfield, Illinois. Will this be their last games? We will see here just shortly. Again, coached by Donnie Isles in this as well. And then Braden Williams, Randy Stanley, Bo Roberson, Kyle Moore, and Cortez Whittaker are the starting five here for Crowley's Ridge as they are coached by Chris Perkins. Now talk to me a little bit, Jared, about Nate Parks, he suffered an injury in the opening round. Talk to us a little bit about what it is. He set out last night, but he didn't dress last night. He's dressed here tonight. He is dressed here tonight and just wanted to be a part of that team action as uh, I believe he is doubtful to get any playing time today, but just wants to be a part as this might be the last chance he gets to wear that red line uniform, wants to be there for his team and just to support them in any way possible. And he wants to wear it loud and proud there just like as we all do, want to, wants to be there for his guys. Can't ask for anything more than that. He's the, one of the leaders of this team. The senior out of Menden, Michigan, possibly could be his final game. But if they can win, they could take him to the national tournament here in this one as it's won by the Crowley's Ridge and more cool and quickly to the rack. But that one, no. But I think Fields touched it out of bounds on the baseline. So it'll stay with the Pioneers. Again, they're in the home gray Uniforms. I've never been a big fan of gray home uniforms. I'm a big baseball guy, so gray to me is the traditional away unis. But in basketball, it is not the case. They are the home team on the scoreboard, or I guess I should say the Lynx on the scoreboard, as Moore now with it to Williams on the right wing. He's guarded by Lawhorn. Look for that matchup to be a good one in this contest as well. As they go to Moore, Moore from downtown trying to get things started. No, Walters and Whittaker fight for the rebound, and Whittaker wins as it puts it back up and in as Crowley's Ridge on the board first. Now here comes the Red Lions back the other way. Harris trying to go quickly, bounce pass one to Lawhorn, but he wasn't in the right position and stolen away. Now Williams ahead to Roberson who runs the floor nicely and lays it up and in. Roberson in that last game, he had a pretty big game as well. 17 points, five boards led the way for his team, but he was the only one in double figures for the Pioneers. So it should be interesting to see if they can't get somebody else going too. As Isles' first shot, no good, trying to tip it back out to Harris, but it, it's lost out of bounds. It kind of seems, Jared, both ways. You know, Isles was the only scorer for LCU. Roberson, same for the Pioneers. Who else is going to step up? We've talked about Fields. We've talked about who's somebody else we could kind of look at under the radar. Continuing that hot streak on this tournament has been Lavelle Harris. He's been one of the key points that uh, Donnie Isles has said was been really good from the tournament. Look for him to continue attacking the basket and create space for the shooters as good steal that time by Caleb Walters will result in another possession by the Red Lions. And 4 nothing right there. I think, you, I think that's a good choice from you as well. Uh, it should be interesting to see how these guys fare. Field trying to get going from the corner. No, halfway down and out. Maybe even three-fourths of the way down. Couldn't get that one to fall. Run the four nicely, though. I believe that was Whittaker, and he lays it up and in. Actually, that was actually Stanley. Both of them kind of look alike. Big, size, stature, stocky guys with a lot of muscle. Trying to fight inside with Caleb Walters today. Isles now with it. Like I mentioned, seven threes in that ball game the other night. Really lit it up from behind the arc. Him and Cochran going back and forth, but nobody else could match him. As Harris trying to say otherwise right here as he's saying, hey, I just knocked down a 3-2. Let's get this thing started. As again for Harris, though, he had an okay night. He shot 50% from the field. He had 12 points, three rebounds, five assists, five steal, or three steals in that one as he comes up with the rebound right here, trying to push the pace. Again, he had a lot of good looks in transition. As Isles now with it over to Walters, trying to back down with Taker off the glass. No, too strong. Moore with the board. Pioneers looking to push the pace and come back the other way. They lead it 6-3 on the scoreboard with 17 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Whittaker looked like he traveled trying to drive baseline, but Walter shuts the door, but he goes back to his left and puts it up and in. Good move there from the big fella down low. 8-3 now. 
Lions are a very slow offensive possession team. They really use all of the shot clock here to get the best look possible as Williams almost got came up with that one, but it's batted out of bounds. They were looking for Isles in the corner, which I'm sure that was the scouting report for Crowley's Ridge. Hey, do not let number two anywhere near a wide open shot. Foul him if you hit must. I'm sure that must be the play here today. We'll see early in this game. Three minutes in, he's been, he's had one shot. He hasn't made it yet though. Lawhorn. Now Harris trying to call for Walters at the top of the key. Now Lawhorn with it, drives in, cuts back to his left, and we're going to have a blocking foul as he said he was set, but he was in the restricted area. 8-3 now. As I believe that's going to send Whittaker to his first personal. Team's first as Lawhorn going to the line. Now, Jared, talk to me a little bit about this, this Lawhorn team. I mean, you guys call him Corn for a reason, but he is an, another one of those guys that provides a big spark offensively and defensively as well. Well, absolutely. Started the uh, season red hot for the Red Lions. Kind of been injured. Kind of had some sickness as he's missed some substantial amount of playing time. But now in the starting lineup with the injury to Parks, and he has just been a great addition to this team. Great senior playing his final season for the Red Lions. And he's getting things started nicely right there. Knocks down the pair. And it's now back to a three-point game. And I got a feeling this could be a, uh, this type of ball game left and right here tonight as well. Williams now with it. Picks up his dribble, goes to Moore. Moore now trying to get it down low to Stanley. Stanley, like I mentioned in his game, he had a few as he knocks down one right there for Roberson from downtown. It's now 11-5 in favor of the Pioneers. 16 and a half minutes to go. Harris now with it. He goes to Walters outside the paint. Now Isles guarded very closely by Williams. Back to Lawhorn on the right wing. Gets a screen from field. They wanted a moving screen. They didn't get it. Out to Isles, all alone from downtown, trying to answer. No, he can't get that one to fall. He certainly did that the other day with Cochran when he made his first one. It really got Isles going as he stops more dead in his tracks. Goes to Whittaker from a mid-range jumper from the elbow. He knocks it down, and it's timeout. Coach Isles as he wants to talk things over. 13-5 to lead here to begin the ball game, and for the coach, it's not something that they're really used to in this contest because of the fact they've been leading the majority of their games here early as they kind of off to a slow start today. But like I said, this crowd is in attendance here for LCU. They are set to go. They're wanting something to cheer about here for the Red Lions. They've not been able to get that going just yet. You can see the Pioneers all smiles so far. Chris Perkins, the head coach for them in his 12th season. He's trying to keep his team fired up and don't let off the gas because this is a, a Crowley's Ridge team that when they get start getting hot, they are a team to beat here. We're going to send it down with Jared on kind of the thoughts from Coach Isles. Coach Isles has made a big emphasis right there, and he said we got to be tougher. we got to put our bodies on the line, got to play some defense right now because they're pushing us around and literally controlling the pace of the game. we got to get back to what we know and just be tougher. Thank you, Jared. Again, they're trying to be tougher right there. Lawhorn trying to drive in and draw some contact, but it leads to a fast break opportunity for Stanley, but he picks up his dribble right beside the free throw line. As now Whittaker trying to drive in on Lawhorn and say that it, it was a blocking foul. Wanted to charge. I think he was going up for the monster slam right there. Now, Jared, talk to me a little bit about that. Whittaker trying to provide that energy and spark early, but wasn't able to throw it down. Is that something that Crowley's Ridge needs right now? Right now, I think it may be a little bit of a too showboaty motion for him. They have the momentum. They have the control. Crowley's Ridge doing a good job, as Isles alluded to. They're really controlling the pace of this game. So right now, I definitely think they just need to stick through the game plan, stick to what they know, because whatever they have planned is working for them right now. As he can't hit the second one right there, and then we're going to have, I believe, a lane violation or a foul going on the Pioneers, so an 0 for 2 stretch right there for them. Missed the free throw and then pick up a foul 90 feet away from the basket as I believe that's going to go on Williams, his first, team's first here, is, or team's second as well. And once again, those gray uniforms are going to throw me off here again today as normally that's not the case. Walters over to Harris. Harris back to Isles. I thought about catching and shooting instead. Backs it out. Harris trying to get it down low to Walters. Working on Whittaker. He comes across and steals it away. Into the hands of Moore. Moore with a three-on-one fast break. Bounce pass, no look to Whittaker. Up and under move, no. Roberson, no. Stanley, no. Roberson again, no. As he still gets it now, Field finally comes up with the basketball for LCU as Harris trying to push the pace as he finds Isles in transition from downtown, and he's got it. 
Garrett Isles got this crowd standing up here a little bit, and maybe that's the spark they needed, wouldn't you say, Jared? Absolutely. This team runs on Garrett Isles when he's hitting. The majority of them are hitting. So great to see that first three-pointer go down. you got to imagine that the threes are going to come in bunches now for the Red Lions. He certainly hopes so. More trying to answer from downtown. No, Lawhorn with a big rebound right there as him and Witt, or Stanley kind of get tangled up a little bit. I think it was a miscommunication right there, but everybody's fine. It's going to go on Stanley. So he's going to pick up the short end of the stick right there, his first team's third as well in this contest as LCU will get the basketball back. And you mentioned it, Jared just mentioned it, when the three start the fall, they come in bunches. They hit 12 yesterday in that ball game, 12 for 28, 42% from behind the arc. That is extremely great shooting by the Red Lions. Unfortunately enough, it still wasn't enough for them in that second half because, like I mentioned, Ozark shot almost 60% from the field in that half as Doty just checked in, trying to save it from going out of bounds, but throws it right into the hands of, of Roberson. Now Moore, he's picked up by Isles. Trying to drive baseline now, up and under move. No, he picks up his dribble to the top of the key, but stolen away by Lawhorn. One-on-one -on -one fast break. Him and Williams trying to go coast to coast. Williams tried to run into him, but Lawhorn too smart as he lays it up and in. Three-point ball game now as LCU in this student section finally getting something to cheer about, but Stanley says, wait a second. This is still my house as well. We played here yesterday, and it puts it back to five. Now, what does LCU have in store here as well? I think we were all wanting to, expecting an LCU-Lincoln game in the conference championship. Would have been a sight to see. It would be interesting to see if LCU can pull this one out and go to the national title or to national tournament as Harris goes to Lawhorn in the corner with five seconds on the shot clock. He can't get that one to go as Robertson. Roberson pulls it down. Roberson in transition, trying to drive in. Left side lane, backs it out nicely. Over to Moore, thought about a three instead. Going to set up this pioneer offense for Chris Perkins. Roberson now, Stanley, backing his man down from the left box. To Whittaker, back out to Williams. Ten seconds on the shot clock. He'll get a screen. Williams from downtown. No, too short. Off the side. Isles pulls down the board to another one of those key factors as Isles actually had eight rebounds in that ball game the other night as he puts that one up and in as well. Back to three. 15-12 now with 12.45 left to play here in this first half. And both of these teams... You know, we know LCU could shoot the three fairly well, 37%, one of the top teams in the country in doing so, as Stanley gets it underneath. Field off the screen wasn't there in time, and he puts it up and in, back to five. But like I was saying, though, both these teams very similar in a lot of ways. These two teams have met before as well. LCU, they basically split one and one. Crowley's Ridge got the better of them at LCU, but LCU got the better of Crowley's Ridge in overtime just a couple of weeks ago as Lawhorn. Driving inside, playing like a big man right now. Gets the easy two to go. Back to three, and it kind of seems like, Jared, this is going to be this type of game all the way through. Absolutely. You got to expect it. Both teams playing for a berth in the national tournament on the line right now. So you got to expect that each team going to wear their heart on the sleeve and get them all they got. Stanley will try a three and knocks it down for Crowley's Ridge. But a lot of intensity, and I expect this to be a back-and-forth matchup. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more in this contest. I mean, we saw that LC, oh, basically both LCU games here this weekend have been kind of back and forth. Doty trying to drive in right side lane, but we're going to have an offensive foul. Doty's trying to say he was in the restricted area, but Roberson stands in there, takes a charge, maybe possibly could look at that down the stretch and maybe possibly see if Doty had a case or not in that one. But it is going to be a six-point lead held by the Pioneers as they will get the basketball back. And Doty will pick up his first personal. Team second, though, however. Still 11 and a half minutes to play. 2014 lead here for the Pioneers. Stanley now at the top of the key. Trying to feed Roberson, give and go, but Harris with the hold right there as he did kind of beat him towards the backdoor cut right there. Harris, that's about the only thing he can do. Otherwise, it probably would have been a one-handed slam there for Roberson if he can throw it down. I would imagine he can, like a lot of these guys are. That's why I'm up here in the press box, and they're down there because I can't jump, nor am I tall. Still a six-point lead, though, however, is Moore with it. Trying to get it down low to Stanley. Trying to back down Doty. Turn around the right-hand hook off the glass. No, field with the big board right there. 
Isles now to Floto who just checked in. He had Doty running the floor, but they didn't see him down low. Isles will get a screen from field, goes to the left. Now Harris to Floto in the corner from downtown. He's cashed in it. So Floto with a big shot right there, gets it back to within three. And this was a, a game, yes, I mentioned they had 12, but I mentioned that Isles had seven of the 12. Floto had, the other, had two of the other four left in that contest. So, again, you're going to have to get him going. I think Fields, or Field would have been nice to see him get going because the last time these two teams met, him and Isles both knocked it down, and floto has got another. He's really starting to heat up right here now. Jared, I'm going to send it down to you here real quick. Talk to me a little bit about Floto. It seems like he's stepping up at the right moment. Well, fun fact about me and Jansen Floto actually went to the same high school. My senior year was uh, spent screening for him to get him open. He's actually wearing my basketball shoes right now. Stanley will step out and hit another three. But Floto, definitely an intangible guy coming off the bench. You see him diamond on the floor for loose balls, tipping passes. But when he has that three-pointer work in it, it is a fun sight to see for the Red Lions. No, no doubt about that. And you told me that, that's your shoes? Those are your shoes? Absolutely. Those are my Kobe's. Okay, okay. I, I see you. Maybe we'll say he's playing for you out there today because, I mean, he's, he's really rocking it right now. Isles trying to get a piece of the action, and he knocks it down. So real quick, talk to me about Isles because we already know he can do that. But is it the shoes for Floto? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's playing right now, and it, he loves those shoes. He told him I could wear them as we got a foul on the floor. But he asked me if he could wear them when I first uh, transferred into LCU, and he's worn them ever since, and he's had a pretty good second half of the year. And for Mike credit it hasn't really been that long for you over at LCU absolutely only been I just transferred in on this semester and it's just been a fun to be a red line so far and he's still wearing it loud and proud even if he's only been there for a couple months he still does it well as again young blood from downtown no can't get that one to go pulled down by Doty who hit the ground hard there holding his head they already had we talked about parks a little bit about that again Doty cannot afford to go out as well as he has it poked away by Roberson Two on one fast break with Stanley running the floor, but he takes it himself and lays it up and in over field. And not much field can do there. Don't want to give up the easy bucket and the foul. So you just got to let that one go on this one. 27 23, 845 left to go. Floto and Jared Glassford shoots with it. Now over to Doty. To Harris. Harris now trying to drive baseline, skips one over to Floto. Is he going to try it again from the corner? And no, we know it must not be the shoes. We know it's not the shoes on that one. But again, the first two for sure, as he had them laced up pretty tight, maybe he needs to take a quick breather and tie him back up again. We'll see what happens. 27-23, blocked by Doty as Stanley on the ground, and Doty says, get that, you know what, out of here. As he checks out for Lawhorn, who has been a spark here for this Red Lions team as well. Again, like I mentioned, this is a Red Lions team. I know the record doesn't show at 10 and 20, but they are a young, scrappy, fighting, clawing type of team, and they will just, they make you earn it. That's what you want out of a, a group, and they will make the Pioneers earn it today if they were the ones to move on, but LCU gonna have a say here so far tonight as we got ourselves a four-point ball game. 27-23, 8.15 to go in the half. Roberson with a step back from the elbow, and he knocks it down. He's a good little freshman there. Him and his brother both coming out as he played in the, the senior son senior game for them. As him and his, his older, or his twin brother, as field from the corner. No, Roberson with the rebound over down in Arkansas. He just blows past Isles, and I think he got a piece of it. They will say stay right here, though, but a good defensive play there for Isles to knock that one away down the stretch. So under eight to play. We got ourselves six-point game, 29-23, and the Pioneers are going to inbound yet again underneath their own basket. Kind of seems like both, both sides so far here today kind of equally matched, I would have to say. No one really going you know, right at somebody, taking it to them just yet. I haven't really seen a, a dominant mismatch so far in this contest as Youngblood gets the offensive board, gets his own miss now, trying to go back up with it. No, Whittaker trying to get that one and tipped out of bounds, last touched by the Red Lions, and it'll once again stay right here for the Pioneers as Grambling out of Arkansas will throw it in. Now, Jared, talking to you, you're sitting on the other side of the floor here. Any thoughts and things that you've kind of seen so far from your vantage point down near the floor that kind of has you intrigued? 
Well, right now, if you look at if you remember my opening thoughts, Coach Isle says we have to rebound the basketball. And so far, as you can see, Crowley's Ridge is owning LCU on the glass. Also, Roberson, the AII Newcomer of the Year, just having his way against this LCU defense. Got to find a way to contain him and keep Crowley's Ridge off the glass. To their credit, though, Crowley's Ridge doing a really good job at exploiting kind of a weakness for LCU. We'll see if they can keep doing that or not, or if LCU will kind of switch gears here a little bit. They have done that time and time again as Whittaker called for the traveling violation on the left side of the paint, and it's another turnover. We're going back the opposite way, still 29-23. And what we've seen so far this from this AII Conference Tournament on the men's side of things, it has been a very defensive type ball game. I think only two teams have scored over 90 in this entire tournament. Very lucky to get some to 80 as we saw the Ozarks and LCU game 69-64. I believe the Lincoln's, Lincoln's games were 81-50, to 74-51, uh, somewhere around there. I mean, a lot of defense being played here in the AI Conference Tournament, and that one off there from Isles. And I think that's exactly why you're going to see four teams go to the national tournament here for the AI men's side of things. As Roberson's off with that one. Whittaker out to Moore. Moore all alone, no. Lawhorn. With the board, and like Jared just mentioned, they all have to rebound the basketball due to the size mismatches that they have. It seems like Isles is guarding himself with more on this one. They're both basically identical as he finds Floto. Out to Harris, swinging it to Lawhorn. Lawhorn off his hands. He couldn't corral it as it's into the hands of the Pioneers. Moore trying to push the pace. Goes to Gremlin. He's trying to take it for three from downtown. No, Youngblood with the offensive board. Trying to back down Floto over him. No, halfway down and rims out. Floto with a good box out right there as well. Plays to some defense as Lawhorn will set a screen right there. Moore runs into it. Isles now over to Harris. Six minutes to go. Harris drives. Oh, to field. To Lawhorn. Lawhorn trying to go right around Whittaker. And no, couldn't get the and one opportunity. It thought about it, but it just hung up there too long as it bounced out. But he'll still go to the line for two opportunities. So that one will go on Youngblood, his first. Again, team's fourth. As College of the Ozarks, you see, just arrived. That is your AII Men's Basketball Conference Championship game coming up very shortly here later tonight. That will be the nightcap at 7 between them and your host school, your Lincoln College Lynx. But as of right now, you Lynx fans cheering on LCU in the five-mile radius here, and that's exactly why we're bringing it to you live here today. 29-24 with under six to go as he knocks them both down. And Jared... Talk to me a little bit about this. What are your thoughts on if LCU was able to make the national tournament? It'd be a, a, a pretty good accomplishment. I think this student section uh, would really uh, love to see that. Oh, absolutely. I think you're going to see them storm the court if that's the case because not just overall, you hear Coach Isles talk about yesterday, not the best record on the season, but just a competitive team. They lost to several of their games as good shot by Roberson, able to hit it in. And Crowley's Ridge will call timeout, and that means we're going to send it back up to you, Nick. What a big shot right there from Roberson. Coach Isles is trying to say, hey, there's a flopping call there. We're going to take a quick break as well. We got ourselves a good one here in Lincoln. 31-25 with five and a half to go in the first half. We'll be right back on LCTV. Many, many years ago, Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln realized that what sets it apart are the people here to help you through the purchase process and help with service after the sale. Employees with 20, 30, even 40 years of service here to serve you and your automotive needs before, during, and after the sale. We're proud of who we have in your corner. Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln, serving Lincoln and Logan County for more than 65 years. Welcome back inside the Jack Dean Nutt Arena where we are set to go here. Again, Jared, we're gonna send it down with you. What did you find out from the other side on the bench? Well, Crowley's Ridge coach said he committed his team, saying we're taking a lot of good shots right at the rim, but we're just not making them right now. He said, be physical, use the glass if you have to, if you get them that close. But he just encouraged his team to keep beating the ball into the paint. We'll see if they can continue to do that. Stanley has had his way a little bit down low. Down low, Whittaker as well has had their fair share of opportunities, but like you said, not been able to capitalize. And now we have a stoppage of play. I'm going to send it back down to you, Jared. You were kind of like right there in that vicinity. What did you hear from those officials? From the officials, it looked like we had a little bit, just a little bit of a clock issue as they're trying to talk things over, going to each coach, but uh, just a little bit of a malfunction, nothing too uh, hard to fix. 
And they are talking with Coach Isles right now. It's no, no argument from either coach, so it must have been, like Jared said, just a real quick, simple statement. Both of them kind of just, okay, move on, let's play. Let's get this show on the road. 31-25, five and a half to play here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena. Practically a home game here for LCU. The eight seed lives to see championship Sunday, but can they finish the job and can extend the season? Floto and Harris gonna have to do a good job with it, but they come up with a steal. The hands of Roberson. Now James. James had a big night as well. He had eight points, two rebounds on the night. Shot three of five from the field. Is now Gremlin's gonna be called for a traveling violation. One of the foul. He didn't get it though as he went right over Isles and it's going back the opposite direction. So really both teams, Jared, you would say battling turnovers right now. Absolutely, and I guess that just goes to show you the level of defense that is being played on both sides. You mentioned it earlier how just so far in the AII conference tournament, a lot of defense, a lot of low scoring games, and it's showed dividend by the number of turnovers on both sides. We'll see if they can keep it up here, and this one's still another half to play as Harris Goes to the corner and Floto. With a team like LCU, you definitely have to be careful because they can shoot the lights out. Floto, I thought, was going to knock that one down from the corner, but this that one didn't go. 31-25, four and a half to play. Youngblood with it. Jumper from the free throw line. Knocks it down, and it seems like the Pioneers, like you mentioned, trying to get to the rim, not finishing, but really those mid-range jump shots have kind of been their go-to. Absolutely. Right now, Youngblood just been a very good asset for the Pioneers in this tournament as a six-man roll. Isles going to go up to the rim and no good that time. Gets his own rebound. Out to Fields. He'll take a three, and that's in and out as well. But as I was mentioning, they're doing a good job with that mid-range, just taking what the defense has given them, and you got to commend the Pioneers for that. Roberson from downtown. No, James with the offensive board. Put back his in. That's what I mentioned. James was the only one other than Roberson. Like I said, he was the only one that had double figures. But he, James was at eight, and he got him, two of them from the free throw line. As there's a shot right there from Floto as he got our field, excuse me, as he knocks it down. This game just kind of staying the same for the most part. Somebody has a shot, somebody will answer. We'll see who's going to take charge late in this first half. Three and a half to go. Gremlin over to Youngblood from downtown, answers it at the other end. Back to a 10-point lead. And I think this is the largest lead here for the Pioneers so far in this ballgame. But like I said, game is far from over. Isles will see if he's got an answer. He usually does. That time he does not. Roberson tips it to himself. Gets the board. Goes back the other way. Roberson now to Youngblood. Going to try again from the exact same spot. This time it was a little short. Harris pulls down the board. Trying to push the pace. He really can fly. Now to Field. Field goes to baseline. Trying to get the Floto inside the lane. But he gets it stolen away off his hands. Roberson, now to James. Back to Roberson, tipped out of bounds by Isles. Good recovery by the LCU. And they got to keep that alive. And I would mention it, it is going to come down to, to the defensive side of things. But one thing, though, you really look at between these two teams, I think it's identical. We mentioned it in the broadcast the other night where LCU is one of those teams where, yeah, they have talent and stuff, but they have to play together as a team if they want to come out on top. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Miracle as Gremlin not Gremlin knocks down the three yet again in timeout coach Isles, but we'll stay right here. What I was saying though is, you know, about the mirror have you if you've ever seen the miracle movie with Herb Brooks, he says to his team, guys, we can't win on talent alone. We don't have enough talent to win on talent alone. But if we play together, we are one of the best teams ever. And you saw what that 1980 United States Olympic team did when they played together as a team. Same concept here for Coach Isles and his squad, they have to play together. When they do, they've only, I think they only had like three games under under 10 assists. So it seems like when they when they share the basketball and play with each other and for each other, they're a team that is forced to be reckoned with. The only problem is, is they gotta get some shots up in this contest. They've kind of been turning it over just a tad bit here tonight. We'll see if possibly that they can't correct that. Chris Perkins on the other hand, trying to draw something up because you know no lead is safe especially with the way these guys know how to shoot the basketball here for LCU. But Crowley's Ridge, don't count them out. That young guard in Roberson as well. Again, him and Stanley, I think they can get going, but they're going to have to start soon. We knew Roberson's going to come in, but I think the real question in here is, before, as we're going to send it down to Jared Lawhorn, really the difference maker so far is he's got 10 out of the 28. 
Absolutely. Lahorn, just one of the few highlights right now for LCU as we just got out of that huddle. Coach Isles is really questioning the heart of his team right now. He said there's only about one or two rushing back on defense. Just question, why are we here? Why are we playing? Question the heart. And he kind of alluded to what you said. He said, we have to be in this together. We have to play for one another. And just the question that he left him with is, why are you playing today? We're about to find out if somebody can answer that question for Coach Isles here in the final two and a half minutes of this first half, maybe even in the second half as well. Who's going to step up for LCU? Like we mentioned, it's got to be a team effort as both of these two schools, Isles gets kind of trapped with it now back to himself. But both these two schools, Crow Crowley's Ridge, number two, in the AII conference in total assists. So you know they have to play well together. They're averaging just about 12 assists in this conference tournament. LCU right behind them, they are at 10 total assists in this one. But like I said though, that's actually pretty down for them because I think the assist total here, like I'm looking at it right now, for LCU, they, they average 16 assists on the night or more. So they really know how to share the basketball. They'll have to do it again here today. You can see it right now as they get it down low, back over to Isles. Now Lawhorn with it, trying to drive in. Give and go one more time here with Curry, and he'll slam it home. 41-30 here as LCU just trying to get back in this ballgame, and we mentioned it one stop at a time. Crowd starting to chant defense to help this team out as much as they can. James now trying to drive in right side lane. No, dishes it off here. Now for, I believe that is Youngblood who takes the jumper. No good. This time pulled down once again by Youngblood and Stanley, and they put it back up and in. 43-30 here with a minute 30 to go. Again, remember, we will talk with both head coaches at the half. First for LCU, and then or Chris Perkins as well. Hopefully, if not, we will talk to one of the assistant coaches as well. But we do have a foul on the floor. That one's going to go on Youngblood, his third here in the half. So I'm sure he's going to have to take a, a quick seat before... He picks up another another one here in the final 90 seconds as we will have David Bolliard checking in. Isles now goes to Lawhorn. Harris back to Isles, thought about catching and shooting. Swings one over to Lawhorn, back down low to Curry, but has it stripped away by Roberson. Roberson now trying to go coast to coast, almost had it poked away by Lawhorn instead. It's it on the other side of the floor. Now James with it, sees the lane, goes right at field. He can't finish. Stanley had it for a second, but Curry pulls it back. Big board there for LCU. Now Harris just beats everybody down the floor. Goes to the corner in Isles all alone from downtown. No. Lawhorn trying to tip it back to himself as it's tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Curry for LCU. Fans didn't like it, but I think it was the right call as we're under a minute to play here. 13-point lead. As again, like I mentioned, we will hear from Coach Isles and Coach Perkins here at the half from Jared Glassford as well. As we'll see kind of what they're thinking and their thought process is here from that first half, Moore will check in for James down the stretch. As the Pioneers have the basketball and the lead, will they go two for one? I would imagine they'd try to get as many points as they can because LCU can score in a hurry. Bolliard now getting the down low to Stanley. Stanley double teamed by Lawhorn and Curry, but he still fights through the double team and puts it up and in. That's a big boy move right there. They did go for the option for two for one. We'll see if LCU goes quick enough now for the two for one. Harris trying to get down low to Curry. He's fouled, I believe, by Willett. So that'll be his first team six or team seven. So that should put Curry at the line for a one and one. And it's, you know, this is the type of basketball, Jared, you can probably attest to this as well. This is the type of basketball you want to see, you know, 30 seconds away from the half being over and finally somebody in the bonus. It seems like they're playing great defense right now and playing the way they should. Great, smart defense being played on both sides. Kind of a low-scoring game by both teams' measures as Curry's going to hit his second one. But as you mentioned, great defense and uh, just goes to show just the high level of intensity that's going on in tonight's contest. 45-32 as he makes one of two. See if possibly he can't get something started here in this one. And shot clock and game clock almost identical, separated by tenths of seconds. So they possibly could hold here for the final shot. Stanley. To Bolliard. Moore now with it on the left wing, looking for Roberson down low, but overthrew him. And that's going to give the opportunity back to LCU with six seconds left to maybe get this possibly back to a 10 point game if they can make a three. I think that's about all they'll have time for, especially with the way they love to shoot the basketball as well. 45 32, four seconds left. Now down to three. Harris 
out to Curry, catch and shoot off one leg, trying to bank it home, no. That was a great first shot right there. As, again, what a half, 45-32 lead here for Chris Perkins. Group in his 12th season as the head coach. As we are ready to go, we're going to send it down to Jared as he's with Chris Perkins right now. All right, Coach Perkins, obviously you go into the halftime with a 13-point lead. Just what's going good for you guys so far? Well, we're defending really well. We know Lincoln Christian is going to be a good three-point shooting team. They're going to shoot about 40 a night. We're doing a nice job of helping. We're doing a nice job of hedging on the shooters. Uh, our defense is really there. We're being aggressive to the basket. We missed a couple of easy shots. We can be a little more aggressive and get to the rim. Absolutely. A lot of your points coming inside the paint right now. Is that a point of emphasis for you guys? I, I feel like we can go one-on-one -on -one with these guys. I think we can get to the rim. We just got to keep getting there and getting to the free throw line. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, Coach. Again, that was Coach Perkins right there. I like what he had to say. They are playing very good defensively here. As, again, we'll quick short moment as now we're getting set to go here with Coach Isles. It seems like, Jared, you're standing by with Coach Isles here as his team trails by 13 on the scoreboard. All right, Coach Isles going to halftime, down 13. What are just some highlights, though, for your Red Lions team so far? Well, you know what? Offensively, we really haven't done a whole lot to what we've done the first two games. You know, we're not doing a good job of finding our shooters. Uh, we're running motion. We get penetration. A couple of times we had wide open layups. We're kicking it back out. Uh, we we got to be we got to do a better job of finding the, our our shooters and getting them open. And uh, I tell you, the one thing that's really hurt us the first half is the big guys inside. Uh, we're not being strong down low. They're backing us into the basket, and they're about two feet. When you're shooting the ball from inside the arc in front of the basket, you're going to shoot a high percentage. Absolutely. Now, uh, with the amount of three-point shooting we have on this team, nothing is impossible, obviously. But what's something we got to do in the second half to get back into this game? I think we got to tighten our defense up. Probably put more pressure on the basketball, force them into some turnovers. Uh, and then when we get those turnovers, we've got to make sure we capitalize on the other end. You know, we come down, we're always wanting to make a great pass instead of making the right pass. And we got the next to second half, we got to make sure we're making the right pass. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. All right, Nick, let's send it back up to you. Well, thank you, Jared. Thank you, Coach Isles, as well. Thank you both, Chris Perkins and Coach Isles, for taking the time, as well as we know they both don't have to. But we do thank them enough and really appreciate it. 45-32 lead here for, again, the home team on the scoreboard, Crowley's Ridge over LCU. The seven versus eight seed. We'll find out who wins in the second half, 20 minutes away, to who's going to the national title tournament game. We will find out in 20 minutes from now. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on LCTV. The State Bank of Lincoln is Lincoln's oldest bank. Its home location at 508 Broadway dates back over 100 years. That's 100 years of providing Lincoln and surrounding area residents and businesses with banking services including savings and checking accounts, personal business and agricultural loans, and retirement planning. The State Bank of Lincoln, since 1903, assisting in strengthening both individuals and the local community. Since I was young, my friends told me and my coaches that I'd be a good coach someday. It was my senior year and it was crunch time. And Lincoln College with a sports management degree and it just like something clicked. I've just always had a, a passion for sports. There's a lot of opportunities out there within sports management. It's for anybody that has a love of sport in general and uh, also from the standpoint of administration. Uh, but more importantly, just the love of the game and also the opportunity to work with others. The opportunities that they get at Lincoln College, they won't find as many other places from the, you know, having the opportunity to get hands-on experience, you know, throughout the college itself as we transition to four-year athletics and in our community. I coached a summer travel baseball team for three years, which I'm now the president of. So the goal is to be an athletic director. They organize schedules, they work with coaches. Um, there's an athletic director at all levels, uh, junior high, recreational programs, high school, college. The types of jobs available to our students when they graduate here cover the whole sport arena from youth sports all the way up to professional sports. Uh, and there's a lot of different disciplines that you could find yourself working in also. I've helped with college, high, higher education, I've helped with high school and junior high, and all those experiences helped me uh, get the positions that I, I'm able to get now, even before graduating uh, college. Day after day, I learned something that I could use when we're in a board meeting or um, for a parent meeting or our uh, flyers for tryouts, stuff like that. Just all the classes that I've had, I never felt like I didn't learn something that would help out with 
where I'm at now as the president or being the head coach of other schools in town. I don't remember how it started. Go to Our back and forth. It always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. This is Creekside. Uh, this is uh, part of Lincoln College. We use this uh, for our science courses. Uh, we'll bring our students out. They get the chance to learn about different topics in the classroom. And then for their laboratory exercises, we'll bring them out here. In the real world, you're not going to be in a classroom, behind a desk, reading a textbook. You're going to be in the field, in a creek, in a forest somewhere, actively uh, testing different hypotheses, looking about different topics. So it's important for us that students get hands-on experience doing field work and not just being told about it in a classroom. Last semester I was taking botany and environmental biology and uh, I really fell in love with the biology course and uh, I knew that we had some great staff, uh, including Dr. Osler, so that really compelled me to, to stay here. I'll be getting my associates at the end of this semester and then I'll have another two years for my uh, bachelor's in biology from Lincoln College. I was in a biology class and I absolutely fell in love with everything about it. I loved the research. I loved coming out here, doing things hands-on. I learned more. I'm, I can see it. I can feel it. And I can bring out my kids, like I said, and they're learning along with me. Like every school has a lab. Not every school has this wealth of resources to come to. We can do research projects. We can explore nature, we can learn about the different wildlife. It's, it is very important to me. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. You know, and the salary. Oh my god, yes. Right? I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you, um, what did you? When people refer to the FAFSA, it's the free application for federal student aid. FAFSA is going to determine your eligibility for your loans, which is based on your grade level, as well as your need base. So Pell Grant, um, SCOG, as well as Illinois State Map Grant. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to fafsa.ed.gov. It's called the free application for a reason. Be careful of anything that's trying to charge you. If the student work, they wanna have their financial information for that tax year, as well as their parents' tax information or have the parents with them so they can put in their FAFSA ID and password. You can transfer that information directly from the IRS website. If you don't have that information, you'll wanna have your parents 1040 which is the form they use to file their taxes. It's always gonna be better to use that tool. Um, first of all, if you get selected for verification, you will not have to provide any tax documents to us to verify that the information on the FAFSA is correct because that information came directly from the IRS. And when you complete the FAFSA, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to include Lincoln College in your FAFSA by using our school code, which is 001709. Um, that will ensure that we receive your FAFSA and then we can determine your eligibility for uh, Illinois State MAP grant or SEOG. We have an e-verification site um, in which a student can just log in remotely. They don't have to bring a bunch of papers into us and go, we don't have to go through all those papers. What they can do is they can verify their FAFSA on that site. So they set up a username and password. 
um, they'll be able to e-sign the verification worksheet and then any documents that they need to provide to support their income, they can upload from a mobile device. I always want students to start as soon as possible because then they can determine their aid and if they are not fully covered, they can look into other options to cover that balance that they have, whether it be a private loan or they can put a plan in place to save some money, do a work study. It just gives you more time to really put a plan in place just in case you do have a remaining balance for the next school year. I'm gonna be honest, I don't find it that hard because the first time I did it, of course, it was hard. The first time was always hard, but if you keep up with everything and just do everything one time, like how you're supposed to do it, and before the deadline, you'll get everything through and just faster and easier. So it wasn't hard for me, no. Applying for financial aid early ensures that if you're eligible for certain grants or other scholarships, you get them because your application gets in first. Um, also, staying in contact with your financial aid office ensures that any documents you might have that are outstanding, they can give you information on those and you can get those in so your financial aid will be complete. The biggest part of a student being successful a lot of times is that financial stress. So if we're able to ease that stress a little bit, student can focus more on their schoolwork, um, becoming acclimated to the school, getting into programs, rather than worrying about how they're going to pay to go to school. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Welcome back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where we have ourselves a 13-point game, 45-32, minute 45 left to go here before we get set to start this second half. And what has been a, an interesting game, it's been back and forth, that's for sure. The only issue is, is LCU not able to keep pace so far, shooting percentage-wise. But credit Crowley's Ridge, as again, they shot 47% from the field in that first half, 20 for 42 in that contest, 5 for 13 from behind the arc. Good for 38%, but 0 for 2 from the free throw line. For LCU, though, the visitors on the scoreboard and trailing. They shot 10 for 26. Good for 38% from the field. 6 of 18 from behind the arc for 33%, but 6 of 6 from the free throw line here again today. So with that being said, like, we knew it was going to come down to making free throws this time, and you heard... You know, Chris Perkins say that, you know, they're going to shoot about 43s a game. They're about halfway there. They have 18 on the night. They've only made six so far. Leading the way is Lawhorn for LCU. He's got 10 on the night, followed by Isles, who was held in check with six points so far. For Crowley's Ridge, though, however, you got two guys that are going to town right now. Stanley has 18 on the night, shooting an 8 for 11 from the from the field along with two or two from behind the arc and then Roberson as we know so well five of nine shooting he's got 11 
so far here tonight. So with those two being said, they really took it to them. You heard Coach Isles say that, you know, they're, they're getting into the poster. You know, Stanley's really crashing the glass right now, and that's exactly what's going on as they're getting out-rebounded by 10 on the glass right now as well. 22-12 to 12 in favor of Crowley's Ridge as the LCU Red Lions will have to start the basketball to start here. They're down 13, need a quick possession and a good look. Curry getting the start here in the second half instead of Caleb Walters. Now Isles with Curry. Curry trying to drive in, goes right around his man, splits them both and puts it up and in. Interesting move here. Jared talked to me a little bit about this because of the fact that, you know, we really didn't see a whole lot of Curry in the first two games. Absolutely. Curry and Floto's minutes kind of fluctuate between the two, but Curry, I mean, fresh off the bench with those fresh legs at the end of the second half. The LCU run on a tiny little run, and you see Coach Isles wanted to go with his quickness, wanted to go with his length, and it pays dividend right there. We'll see if they, they can get a couple stops here and get back into this contest. Three seconds on the shot clock, though. Moore just going to have to throw one up. Isles with good defense, but it's not going to matter as Harris trying to save it. He will as he pulls it down. 45-34, 11-point game. Harris to Isles from deep. And half, oh, it wanted to. It really did. But it unfortunately pops out for, Co or for Garrett Isles, who sent this crowd on a basically what, what you heard from me. There are a lot of O's because they all thought that one was going down. A lot of hands in the air because Isles about stepped into one. He makes that 80% of the time as Whittaker from the free throw line. No, Stanley with the offensive board. Back to Moore. Roberson now, he had 11. He's going to pull up from deep. And he switches home a three. So a miss by Isles from downtown leads to a Roberson three on the other end. 48-34. 18 and a half still to go. Harris trying to drive in on Moore. He's got it tipped and poked away. Into the hands of Moore, and that's not what you want to see if you're a Red Lions fan, isn't that right, Jared? Oh, absolutely. You don't like, I mean, absolutely you don't like to see it. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't really paying attention a whole lot from what you said. It kind of engulfed in the game. But right now, you can wish that the Red Lions make a little half of court, or excuse me, some halftime adjustments and try to keep Crowley's Ridge outside of the paint. And just turnover after turnover leads to another bucket on the other end by Williams. And that's not what you want to see here from the Pioneers, or from the Red Lions as well. I believe Curry's going to pick that one up. Count the basket and the foul is Williams, or Williams going to the line to shoot one. And again, we we're gonna have an interview scheduled here, but I think he said no on that one as Christian Lowry, the AD and the women's head coach here for the Red Lions, Lady Red Lions, in attendance here today. A young guy getting a start here at LCU, you gotta like that as well. But unfortunately for his team, lost in the first opening round as Lawhorn trying to pick up where he left off, and he will as he puts the bucket in inside the paint. But like I was saying, he, they just ran into a very, very good College of the Ozarks team. I mean, their girls team is nationally ranked for a reason. They're 28 and four. You'll see them in the game next. That will be on LCTV as well. As Harris will come up with a steal right there. He's got a two on one. Give and go with Curry. Curry to the rack. No. Field put back in as Field Running the floor there, that one now Curry trying to pressure the basketball a little bit, but not going to matter in this one as Williams will just kind of shake him off. Williams. Now it's Stanley. Give and go with Williams as he cuts to the back door, cuts towards the rim, but Lawhorn comes out of nowhere. They call a foul at late on this one. I thought Lawhorn had a clean block from my point of view, but they say it was a late whistle, calls the block, and turns it into a foul as that will put, be his second. And then put Williams back at the line. And Williams, and this one so far, no points on the night as he knocks down, or can't take the first one. He's got a two so far from the free throws. But other than that, no shots have been made from Williams, who had, I believe, six. Or he had four in the half, or in the game against the Lynx as well. But here's an interesting stat for you. Jared, that you could kind of attest to this. Seems like we're not seeing this today, but in that else or the Lynx game, it was the Crowley's Ridge just shot 36% as he made the second one. But again, four guys, 0 for, didn't make a basket. They were 0 for 7 total combined. Not the case here tonight. Yeah, right now, Crowley's Ridge red hot, it looks like. And they're doing that because 
a lot of the times they're getting their shots at the paint, and it's easier the closer you get in. LCU's got to do a better job and put up a fight inside the paint. Roberson from the, the elbow, and I think you're exactly right. There's another one of those inside that paint presence, 54-38. And if I look right here as of right now, points scored in the paint favor Crowley's Ridge 24-8 to eight inside the restricted area side of things. So that, that just proves Jared's point even more that Crowley, Crowley's Ridge just trying to get inside the paint. They know they're bigger. They know the mismatch is there. Stanley had an outstanding first half, and he's going to work right here on field. Turn around, right-handed hook. No, too strong. Whitaker trying to bat it out of bounds, and he will. Goes back to the Red Lions here. But, Jared, I want to ask you something about this. You know, we're, we're speaking of all this size and the mismatches down low. Why did we not see maybe possibly Caleb Walters come out for that second half? Because he's the biggest one they got. It is, and you wonder why that is the thing. I'm kind of questioning it myself. Maybe they thought Curry would provide a little bit more athleticism and length to match up because a lot of Crowley's Ridge players are big, they are strong, but they're also extremely quick, and maybe that was the approach that Coach Isles went for right there. Uh, I, I, could, I can agree with that as well, but I, at the same time, I remember against Washington Adventist, Caleb, Walters had probably his first 10 out of the 12 in that first half. Absolutely, and it was the same as the first matchup, as you saw against Washington at Venice in the regular season. Caleb Walters came out, was 5 for 6 on the first half. The only uh, shot he missed was that first half, or was the end of the half heave that he had. But you got to wonder, Caleb Walters can't stay on the bench for long if you're Coach Isles. I would have to agree as Stanley once again going to work. And I like Field as well. I mean, Fields has the size and the strength and the built of a toughness down low, but Stanley just having his way right now as that one's tipped out of bounds by Williams. It'll stay with them as well with the Red Lions. They trail by 16 here in the first five minutes of this second half, 56 to 40. But like I said, this is a, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. They can come back very quickly. We'll see if they can do it here. 15 minutes to work with as Lawhorn goes to the rack and puts it up and in. It seems like that might be the go-to move right there. Jared, that's now two possessions in a row where he's drove to the rack and finished. Absolutely, and Korn kind of uh, that main paint presence on this LCU team. Not a great three-point shooter. Not really known for his three-point uh, scoring. But one thing he is able to do is kind of use that length to get to the paint, and he uses it well. As Moore lays it up and in right there off the steal by Roberson. And I can't, I would agree with you as well. Isles has a, Coach Isles has a very interesting way and strategic way, I will say, of managing this basketball game and all the games he's in as Harris misses right there. Because, you know, Lawhorn and Harris, neither one of them really played against the Lynx here in this one. And you figured that you, you would want to try to beat your rival here in this one as we're going to have a foul underneath the basket going on LCU, I believe. That one's going to we're gonna put it on the field. His first, team's third here. And this one has Coach Isles, I believe, going to take a full timeout in this one. So we will, too. 14 minutes still to go. Still anybody's game. 58-42 lead for the Pioneers. We'll be right back on LCTV. Many, many years ago, Grouse Chevrolet Buick and Lincoln realized that what sets it apart are the people here to help you through the purchase process and help with service after the sale. Employees with 20, 30, even 40 years of service. Here to serve you and your automotive needs before, during, and after the sale. We're proud of who we have in your corner. Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln, serving Lincoln and Logan County for more than 65 years. Welcome back inside the Jack Dean Arena where we are getting set to go as LCU is still trailing here to Crowley's Ridge, 58-42. But like I said, though, still plenty of time, 14 minutes to go in this contest. And and the Red Lions just needed a quick breather right here because, again, it's, it seems like those turnovers and inside the paint presence, like we've mentioned this entire broadcast, as Jared, you were just listening in. What, were, what did you hear from that bench? I actually had the opportunity to go to both benches. Coach Isles says we're playing too much defense with our hands right now. We're not stepping in front of their drives. We're not stepping in front of the uh, the people that get the ball in the paint. We're playing defense with our hands. Says we got to be play like men, play like college basketball players, and put a body in front of people. And on Crowley's Ridge, Coach Perkins says we got to have better movement both offensively and defensively. He says they're going to make a run at some point. We know how good of a three-point shooting team. 
that they are, we got to stay active on defense and know where Isles is at all times. And so far they, they have kept Isles in check here today. Just six points on the night for Garrett Isles. Two of eight shooting from the field. Two of six from behind the arc for Mr. Isles. He's going to have to get something going here in this ballgame. Missed a pair of free throws right there by the Pioneers. 58-42. Flodo back in the ballgame as he hands it to Harris. Harris drives in right side lane off the glass. Too strong. Flodo offensive board. Putback is in. And that's the type of energy and spark that one, this crowd wants to see, along with Coach Isles. 58-44 now. 13-45 left to go. What do the Pioneers have in stores? That one's tipped into the hands of from Lawhorn into Isles. Isles might pull up in transition. He thought about it, that's for sure. But he goes to Floto. Now back to Isles. This time he'll pull the trigger, but this one a little off. Harris trying to save it. Goes to, to I believe, field, but he can't lose, and he loses it out of bounds as well. So the LCU, Jared, talk to me a little bit about this. They've had their opportunities here so far in the first seven minutes, just not capitalizing at the moment. Not capitalizing. Right now you got to imagine that they're going to try to shoot their way out of this, but what I really like about that um, from Floto is getting to the paint and getting right to the rim. You gotta imagine, we all know shooting is contagious and that goes for down low. Get a couple of good stops, or excuse me, a good scores on the inside and hopefully the outside game will follow. Stanley just laid that one up and in right there. I think you're right, play the inside out game as well. These are deadly three point shooters for LCU. It could open up a lot of holes. Floto thought about it, said he drives baseline up and under move. No, can't get that one to go as Moore was there for the pull down. Now, Gremlin out to Stanley. He slams it home with a two-handed slam. Not the biggest slam we've seen this tournament, but enough to send a message. And that's what Stanley has done here tonight. Really playing well. He's got 20. Now, Lawhorn loses it underneath the basket. In the hands of Roberson. Give and go with Moore. Moore will take it himself as he beats everybody down the floor and lays it up and in. Now a 20-point lead here for LCU. They still got three timeouts remaining. They just used one. If this keeps, continues, they might want to think about using one, but they will pick up a foul right here to kind of slow it down just a tad bit. More will check out here for James, but again, Jared, talk to me a little bit about this. No matter if this score stays the same or not, it has been a great run for this LCU team in the tournament. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, we all know how hard it is to win games, especially at this level, to beat, but to beat a top 10 nationally ranked team twice in one year, so it's just... Uh, the toughness and just the uh, pure grit of this LCU team, and so they got the lo or they got the win, and just a tough, heartbreaking loss last night to College of the Ozarks as they were almost on the verge of w leading that game by 20 and end up losing. But just this LCU team does not back down. Uh, it's full of grit, full of just tough players, and hopefully we can see that for the rest of the game. I think you're right, and again, we used it a little earlier as Floto goes for the three, and he knocks it down. That's the start that you were just talking about. Jared right there from Floto, 66-47. They're going to need a few more of those. But I was mentioning it. I told, actually, the Haskell head coach, Matthew Downing Jr., earlier that last year in the tournament when LCU played Indiana Northwest as James drives. But like I was saying, though, as they played earlier in that last season, the first game, LCU was down 20-2. to two in that contest and came back, tied the game late and ended up losing on a pair of free throws down the stretch as they couldn't make the three. But like I said, they did come back. They got it back into the game right around some sort of round starting with this time frame. So it should be interesting to see as we will have a foul going on the red lines. I believe that one's going to be picked up by Isles, his first team's fourth here in the half already. So really, Jared, I mean, what have you seen so far as James at the line really letting them play here tonight? They are really letting them play on that possession. Three block shots that could have been called for contact on the foul as Caleb Walters will check in for the half for the first time. We mentioned that earlier as uh, we both thought he probably been, should have been playing this entire half. But um, there's really letting them play a really physical game, as you can see by the points in the paint by Crowley's Ridge. We'll see as he makes the first one. Can't hit the second one. Walters back in the ballgame with the rebound. See if they can't do that one. Floto somehow saved it from going out of bounds. I don't know how he did that. Well, keeping his balance as well. They give it to Walters. Back to Field. Field trying to give it to Harris. Harris on the wing, trying to drive in on Williams. And both of these two teams, they know each other so well. You heard it from Perkins out to Isles. Isles is off from three. You can see that one right from my vantage point as soon as he, it left his hand. It's not looking good here for Garrett Isles. And, and we've mentioned that, Jared, like we said, is they're going to pick up a foul here. Walters is his first 
But as you said earlier in the broadcast, it seems like the team goes as, as Isles goes as well. And so far tonight, he's going to have to take a seat. Yeah, and they are just swarming him on defense, not letting him get a ton of openings. And normally not much of a problem as they run a few schemes to get him open, but those schemes are not working tonight as he takes his seat. You know, believe we're going to the shot clock did not turn on, so they're going to adjust that to 27 seconds, and they do. But, I mean, just a rough night for Isles. you got to imagine that uh, dad coach is going to use this as a timeout just to get his son a little breather and kind of more of a mental breather than anything. I like, I like that, get him mentally back in this ballgame. This game is still not over. There's still plenty of time left to make LCU to make a run and make this game interesting. It's, but Stanley trying to keep the door closed as he's had a monster game inside. Williams now saves that one and steals it away into the hands of Stanley as they're coming back quickly the other way. James to the corner now here for Williams, but he lost it either out of bounds or a traveling violation. This student section, man, one of the best ones that we've seen so far this tournament. Blocks my field of play, but what I was going to say, though, is the fact due to those fouls, they're letting them play, which you want to see happen. Yes, you want to see them let them play, but I think, Jared, this kind of puts LCU at a disadvantage. They are. They're kind of an outside team, not a really a nitty-gritty in the paint team. As you can tell right now, trying to go with a tough line up as Bryce Pollard checked in. Now three forwards, and I know field much of a three-point shooter, but three forwards on the floor leaving Floto and Harris as the lone guards on the floor trying to get a little bit of an inside toughness for the Red Lions. As Caleb Walters is going to pick up an over and back call right there, awfully close. That's not what you want to see here. And I like your, I like what they're trying to do here, trying to play a little bit bigger. They're trying to just kind of match up just a hair and at least get somebody to stop Stanley inside the paint, at least, you know, kind of get him off his game just a little bit, maybe throw him off of here or there, give him a little bump, take a, take a charge, something along the lines to kind of slow him down a little bit. They have not been able to do that so far tonight. We'll see if they can do that in the next 10 minutes. Roberson now with it. Takes a step back three over Walters. No, but Gremlin's right there for the putback. No, he still can't get it as it's still loose and somehow ends up with field. Now Harris. Back to Harris now to field, who I thought was going to catch and shoot on that one. Instead, he drives in, puts up a shot, and is fouled in the act of shooting. And an awfully quick call right there. Is that one's going to go on. Roberson, his first team second here in the half, and that's what I mean. Halfway through, only the second team total foul here on the Pioneers as Field will head to the line. And one thing you want to look at here in the conference is I know we've talked a lot about these guys, but for this LCU team, Garrett Isles actually second in scoring so far in this AII conference tournament, averaging 25 points a game. So far, we mentioned just six. Somebody else that we saw, we heard told the game the other night, it was all Isles and nobody else. This time, it is everybody else and no Isles. We'll see if they, that can change here coming out of the timeout. 20 point lead here for the Pioneers who are trying to seal the deal to head to the national tournament. We'll, can they hold it though? We will find out when we come back. 69-49 right here on LCTV. ME Realty in Lincoln brings home buyers and sellers together in Logan County and the surrounding area. ME Realty is now at a new location at 602 Keokuk in Lincoln. Call them at 217-735-5424 or online at sethsellslincoln.com. See all of their latest home listings at any time. M.E. Realty, proud to be involved in the Lincoln community. Welcome back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena. Jared, I saw this time around you had a chance to kind of take a sneak peek. What were your, what did you kind of overhear from the huddles from both sides? Well, LCU in that huddle, Coach Isles has quoted as saying, it's go time. But then he went on to say, we can't bring it all back at once. He said, but it starts with this possession right here. we got to lock down a defense, start the drives, and then work for good shots on offense. And on the Crowley's Ridge side of things, he's going to say, keep driving it down their throats. We're doing a good job as uh, Roberson is going to uh, go to the line after the and to uh, complete the and one play. But... He's quoted as saying, keep driving it down the throats, but watch out for that three because they're probably going to crack down, start clogging things up in the paint. Shooters, be on the perimeter and be ready to shoot as he's expecting to have a lot of three-pointers this last 930. And 
I, I certainly hope so. It would make it a very exciting game if it did and make me lose my voice even more. So far, we're not there yet, but LCU, half the reason why I don't have a voice between the first two games they played in, that's for sure. They're trying to do it again. Floto from the corner, no, off the side. Looked like Lawhorn was held, and it will be called as Youngblood kind of giving them a little elbow to the, the upper, upper shoulders. They will call that. That's his t fourth, though, so that's kind of some good news there for the Pioneers as, and Youngblood has came off the bench here today, but he's going to have to take a seat as Grambling checks back in. 72-49, and I think, Jared, you did say it right. Coach Isles said, you know, it is go time. We'll see if they can do that as well. Floto, down low to Lawhorn. You mentioned that he has kind of been the big. He's trying to play like one right now inside the paint. Turn around, right-hand hook. No, looked like he was fouled. They didn't call it, though. It's like we mentioned, they're going to let him play here today, and unfortunately enough, the size is not in favor of LCU. So they get it down low to Stanley. You can see Field trying to do everything he can. This time he gets it to go. Now Isles. Fouled 90 feet away from the basket as that's only the team's fourth here against the Pioneers. So LCU, I think, has to do a little bit better job of maybe drawing some fouls, getting to the line of some sort. They are a great free throw shooting team. I mean, they shoot 70%, and really a lot of majority of the teams right around that 70, 71, 72. Actually, if not a little lower than that, 68, 65. Isles trying to get going, but still... Can't get one to go. He had a couple big ones early in the first half. Since then, awfully quiet. Still scoreless here in the second. James trying to drive in. Picks up his dribble. Give and go with Roberson. As he moves towards the baseline, backs it out. Trying to get down low to Stanley. Stanley backing downfield. Give and go. Looked like he traveled, but they're going to not call it. And he puts it back up and in either way. 8.15 to go. 74-49. Lawhorn trying to go quickly now as he kicks it back out to Harris. Harris from deep. As he steps into a three, and I feel like Harris, Jared talked to me a little bit more about that. Seems like he doesn't like the, the shoot at first, but when he does, it's lights out. Normally a distributor is Lavelle Harris, and uh, normally his job is to run the offense and uh, get, make sure people are in their places. Normally a driver and a slasher as a secondary position, but he is capable of making some big shots from behind the arc, and uh, just a great player in Lavelle Harris. 77-52, Harris. Once again, trying to get to the rack, and there he's got the last five right there for LCU. Maybe uh, get him going and provide a little bit of a spark. Might set up Isles nicely. He almost came up with a steal right there, and Isles all over him. And they're going to be forced to traveling violation there on James. Again, they were trying to say that he was kind of pushed, but I don't think so. Isles did a, some great defense, him and Harris. Harris, one of the top five guys in the country in total steals. Actually six, so just outside of it. But, I mean, hey, close enough for me as he's still playing right here in tonight's contest. We'll see if he can get a more spark here for them as he's got the last five. Floto with jumper from the elbow, and it seems like it's halfway down, but it's not going to fall for him here today. They're good looks. Just can't get him to go. Kremlin from the corner, and he does. He knocks down the three right there, and it seems like that's been kind of the, the way this one is going to go in tonight's game. Still seven minutes left, but... Elsie, you're going to have to work quickly here, and we're going to have a foul on the floor as Lawhorn and Grimling kind of exchanging some words. The officials kind of telling Grim, Gremlin to stop here a little bit because this is where you don't really, for Crowley's Rich, you don't want to see this type of thing happen. We saw the frustration mount for Washington at Adventist, and it seems like that can get to you. Pick up a technical foul here, kind of keep the life alive for maybe LCU, Jared? Oh, yeah, absolutely. LCU kind of all season uh, known to get under some team skin. And Crowley's Ridge right now, you got a big lead. you got to protect that. You don't want to do anything mentally stupid and just stay in the game and not in your head. And Isles was off with that one, but Willett is not as he gives the student section a little bit of a look as he goes back down the floor. Big shot right there to kind of put the game on ice here for LCU, make them Go, go into hurry up mode. We'll see if they can do it in time. Doty trying to drive in. Looked like he traveled, but they're not going to call it. Walters now short. Lawhorn with the offensive board. They had they had Isles and said he'll back it out. Now to Harris. Harris trying to drive in. This is off the Doty, but it's tipped into the hands of the Pioneers. Gremlin to Moore. Back to Roberson. Up and under move. No, gets his own miss. Goes to the right side of the lane and puts it up and in off the glass. And it's going to be a full timeout taken here by Chris Perkins 
as he wants to talk things over, set up the defense, get his guys all on the same page. We will too. 85-54 lead for his group with six minutes to go as we'll be right back on LCTV. The State Bank of Lincoln is Lincoln's oldest bank. Its home location at 508 Broadway dates back over 100 years. That's 100 years of providing Lincoln and surrounding area residents and businesses with banking services including savings and checking accounts, personal business and agricultural loans, and retirement planning. The State Bank of Lincoln, since 1903, assisting in strengthening both individuals and the local community. Welcome back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where it seems like it's going to be the Pioneers taking that third and final bid to the national tournament over in South Dakota. But, however, though, Jared, what does Coach Isles and his group have to say about that? Coach Isles in that timeout spoke about identity. He said things don't look good right now, but are, do you really want to go down as the team that just rolled over and gave up, or do you want to try to claw your way back into this and go down with a fight? and just really trying to motivate the troops right there and spoke really dearly about the identity of this team. Well, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. If you're going to go down, go down fighting, that's for sure. Don't ever quit as they get it inside the Doty, way off on that one. Looked like he might have been fouled, but like I said, they've been letting a lot of that go here tonight as Willett with a good move up and under. Can't get that one to fall as Walters pulls down the board. Harris and this LCU team going to have to go quickly here. 85-54, Lawhorn in the corner, down low to Walters, working on Stanley, goes right at him and up and in. And now, Jared, that kind of looked pretty easy there for Caleb Walters. I mean, maybe something they could have gone to five minutes ago. Oh, absolutely, right now. You look at the lineup for LCU, kind of still sticking with that three forward lineup as you see Doty, Walters, and Lawhorn in defensively. And Walters really has that nice little touch around the rim, and you like to think that that should have been something that sh should have happened through the course of the second half. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, and he comes up big right there, gets Stanley to force a traveling violation. As we're heading back down the other way, it's kind of been little to no win there. As Willett will check back out. I believe more comes in for him. And it seems like just as we talked about LCU going big, here comes Whittaker back into the game with Stanley. So they go with two big guys and two towers down low. Isles now with it, guarded by Moore. Creates some space, takes the mid-range jumper halfway down and can't get it to go. And it seems like that's been all day for Mr. Isles as he really just, it seems like it's an open look and it just doesn't fall, hits the rim a certain way, bounces out, and I'm sure he's not happy and very frustrated about that. Now Stanley from way downtown, no, halfway down. And it seems like maybe it's the rims. Maybe it's something on the rims. It seems like we've had a lot of bounce outs here today. Isles now trying to drive in, has it poked away, keeps the dribble alive, though, trying to feed it quickly down low to Doty. Pump fakes, makes Whittaker go and right over him, and he'll lay it up and in. And it seems like the last four points now, Jared, coming inside the paint. But is it too little too late for LCU? I mean, it, crazier things have happened in the game of basketball, but definitely I think this lineup is built to score in the paint. Not a ton of three-point shooting on the court, as really Garrett Isles, the only high-volume three-point score and he's been off his game tonight so this team this lineup is built to score in the paint so I think you're gonna see a lot of that I think I, I think that's a good idea as well just try to salvage something as much as you can more from downtown no long rebound into the hands of Walters 85 58 now three just over just under four minutes to play in this contest still enough time to make a run here for LCU but they gotta have to go quickly Doty drives, kicks it out to Isles, a little bit of a bad pass, left him a little hesitation there on the three. Lawhorn now with it, trying to drive in, goes right around Stanley and up and in. And it seems like they've had their way when they decide to drive, but when they, they seem like you said to be settling because they love to shoot the three ball. Oh, absolutely, and I think they might have found it out a little too late as they tried to stick. I mean, i got to give them credit, trying to stick to their identity. They know they're a three-point shooting team, but when the threes uh, had not been falling, uh, they tried to just shoot their way out of it instead of taking with the defense would give them as good offensive foul taken by Lawhorn, but just not a really aware today of what the defense has given them and it might be a little bit too late, too little too late of a situation for the Red Lions. Well, we will see good charge take, taken right there by the Red Lions and like you said, you want to see that toughness and go down with the fight and that's, that's a start of it. 
of it right there as Stanley checks out of the ball game. Here comes Roberson, Key Roberson, in for Whittaker. I believe also we saw as well Corey Ricker check in as he rocks the headband. Here we go. 3.15 to go. Will LCU have a run? Miles, like we mentioned, has to get going. Been quiet all game long. Trying to get it down low to Walters. Working on Ricker. Spins left towards the baseline and up and in. Walters having himself away, but we talked about it as well. Just not putting him in the contest here late until the end. And as we both have said, might be too little, too late. But this student section still in it. We'll see if maybe that can provide a spark. Harris almost comes with the steal right there on Roberson. Now, Gremlin with it, gonna pull up from deep from downtown off the side of the rim. Good box out by Walters to box out Ricker. And LCU quickly coming back the other way. Lawhorn with it at the right elbows. Sneaks one down low to Walters and once again puts it up and in. Might have been fouled as well, Jared. I mean, hey, Caleb Walters, um, going back to that move as uh, you see Nate Parks had to check back in. I mentioned it was doubtful for him to play, but it looks like you're going to check in to have all five seniors on the floor as it looks like this is going to be the last time that they get to wear their uh, uniforms for the Red Lions. So I think you're going to see a very emotional stretch of basketball here for LCU. And unfortunately, this is not what you how it wants to be ended. But like you mentioned, though, getting the seniors in, showing them that they were you know, well-deserved to wear that jersey and that they are being honored for all the hard work that they have put in throughout the four years or less that they have been here. So, again, credit to all of them. This game's still not over. Maybe maybe that provides a spark here, Jared, or maybe putting in the seniors, that, like you said, that emotion running high. Maybe that gets them going. Oh, absolutely. Nate Parks, as we know, interested to see how well he'll play. Just a great three-point shooter. Uh, one of the um, top shooters on this team as far as percentage goes from behind the arc. And uh, you see Parks checking in, very emotional as he's about to check in. And so, I mean, crazier things have happened when we both know that anything can happen in sports. If games were playing on paper, there'd be no point in even playing it in the first place. But you got to imagine this is going to be a very high emotion uh, stretch of basketball here for LCU. Oh, and, and talk to us a little bit about Parks. I mean, tell us, I mean, we talked about he was, he was injured, but real quick before you do, I, Tell us what this student section is chanting for us right now. They're cheering, cheering on LCU as you look and you see tears in the eyes of Doty and Parks. Parks transferred in here from Bethel College a couple years ago. And right now, just a, a full of tears overwhelmed by emotions as his last game here for the Red Lions. And you just can't say enough about the student section as they had a large one last night. They have an even bigger one right now. And unfortunate they got to come out as the subs are going to check back in. And that'll be it for the five seniors. And you're exactly right. Congratulations to every single one of them here as well. They've all done an outstanding job. And it, you can see it right here. It's, it's even emotional for the underclassmen as well because of how much and how much they meant to this team. And uh, real quick, I know we talked about the five seniors and things of that nature, but tell me how big is this going to be for Coach Isles and, and him and Garrett as they're going to share the floor together for the final time. And I, I mean, no, I know my dad was a coach for me in high school, and that last game just meant something special. And it's just something that you just have a bond as a father-son. Uh, obviously, growing up playing sports, he was a coach in high school, coach in middle school, and now coach in college. So it's just great to see Coach Isles get to have this last game with Garrett. And uh, you mentioned the underclassmen. You see a lot of just bonds, and it just goes to show you sports is a way to bring people together as a lot of these people are friends both on and off the court. And, and like you mentioned, I think that's well said. Like you said, that brings them all together, and we're going to use it to a little bit of our bench from all over the country as well. You're from Ohio. I'm from right here in Springfield, so not too far from here. So, again, it brings people all over the country as well, like you mentioned, as, and it creates a, a pretty good bond. As again, LCU just trying to make some sort of you know spark here down the stretch, but unfortunately, Bryce Cook not going to be able to get that one to fall for him as well. Now, Jared, I'm going to actually, I know you still have that stat sheet over there, do you not? All right, he's got it. Good luck, sir. This is your game, your broadcast. Take it away here for the final minute of your LCU Red Lions. Absolutely. Curry going to come off a screen from Bryce Cook. Bryce Cook shoots it for 15. 
and that shot no good. Uh, grew up playing against Bryce Cook as uh, that shot gave me nightmares. Had to guard him from about sixth grade on as we were the same conference opponents. As here we go now, the, looks like Crowley's Ridge is going to take a three, and that is good. And this goes to show that Crowley's Ridge has everything going for him tonight as they lead 90 to 64. Curry going to try it up to go up to Jansen. Lob a little too short, trying to get a little dunk, a little uh, last second heave. And they're going to go up as Keegan Thrash. He's a fan favorite, a, a junior RA, and not much playing time. But when he's in, the student section tends to go nuts. And it looks like that's going to do it, folks. Crowley's Ridge will finish third place in the AII Conference and will move on to play in the NAIA Conference. LCU, a disappointing way to end the season, but what can you say? It's been a season of resilience and grit for the Reds and Lions. Final score, LCU 66, Crowley's Ridge 90, and we're going to turn it back up to you, Nick. And that was a great final minute there from Jared. Again, unfortunately for LCU, it just didn't go their way tonight. They had opportunities, just couldn't capitalize. Once again, I'm with Jared. Congratulations to the pioneers of Crowley's Ridge. They did the, the job that they needed to do to get done today. And I know it's a heartbreaking loss for LCU. I think they deserve to be in the national tournament, even though with what their record is, I mean, beating two top, beating a top 10 team twice in the same year is tough to do and especially with a team like Washington Adventist, who's going to make the tournament as an at-large. And for the AII Conference Tournament, we get four bids now due to the fact that they were knocked out by LCU. So, again, I know that the, the Pioneers don't want to think, think anything of it because they won, but LCU actually got L the Pioneers into the national tournament because they took down the one seed. And like you mentioned, Jared, it was a great first half all the way around. We're actually going to send it down now. Here quickly to the head coach here for Crowley's Ridge after the 90, 90 to 66 victory. I'm actually with Coach uh, Barrow of the uh, Crowley's Ridge as the head coach went to the locker room. But Coach Barrow, just an impressive win to come out here. And uh, just what can you say about this game? Uh, it was just a big bounce back game for us. You know, yesterday we, we struggled shooting from the field last night and it, 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 it kind of hurt us. And uh, having this bounce back game, it was a great game for us to come back on and especially to go to national tournament with this first time in program history. Um, so we're really excited about it. Absolutely. What can you say just about this team as you start the tournament off with a great upset, a tough game last night, and then a great win tonight? What can you say about this team? Uh, sometimes we have to fight dirty, and uh, not, not necessarily dirty, but we have to fight ugly. Um, you know, some games we can go and blow out teams, and some games it's a two-point win. Uh, but we, we fight, and we're, we're always aggressive, and we always keep going at it. And that's one thing from last year to this year that I've seen is we're, we're more aggressive, and we don't quit on ourselves. We, we keep it going. Absolutely. You're going to advance on to the NAIA tournament. Can you just give us a preview of what that's going to look like? Um, we're, we're going to stay aggressive. You know, we're going to get back in the gym next week. We're going to keep working, uh, kind of trying to get better and, and improve for this upcoming year and uh, the rest of the postseason. Absolutely. Thank you for your time, Coach. Good luck in the uh, tournament. Nick, let's go ahead and send that back to the BOV. And what a great interview that was right there. Again, LCU still on the floor here. They had a quick prayer as well. And, again, this is just a big thank you that you're seeing right now with the students and the fans as well just kind of having a moment together because it is the final time and it, it is going to be a, a touching moment for them. They played outstanding in this conference tournament. Uh, they made it once again. It'll be interesting to see as Jared's standing by with Coach Isles. Now, again, he's, we're going to send it down to him because it's, it is a tough loss for Coach Isles. Coach Isles, after a, another tough loss, just uh, what can you say, though, about this Red Lion season? Well... I tell you, like, like we talked about the other day, our, our record didn't look the greatest, but I think, you know, what we did this past weekend, um, upset the number one team, you know, not once, but twice this year, and just how hard our kids fought and how hard they play, um, you, can't, you can't say enough about them. You know, they, they put in time every day. Uh, they're practicing two hours every day, uh, along with their schoolwork and things, and um, I just can't say enough about the group of guys that I had and what a blessing it is to, to work with them. Absolutely. we got five seniors who put on the jersey for the last night, one of them being your son. Can you just give us a word of what they mean to this program? Well, you know, they, when they came into the program, um, it, it, was, it was we were starting the NAIA stuff at that time. So we, we've taken some lumps over the years. And you know, last year we had 14 wins, made the tournament for the first time. But the level of competition that we play and the size of school that we are, um, what those five seniors have done for our program and help put it where it's at, I look for great things to come. Absolutely. And I know uh, the seniors uh, 
I mean, obviously, I'm a student at LCU. You see a lot of just the impact they make both on and off the court. So it's got to be an honor to play with all five of those guys. Yes, you know, not only are those guys great basketball players, but they're even better men. And uh, it's just exciting to see just what those guys are going to become in life. You know, um, I look for great things out of all five of them. Absolutely. And I know it's tough to, right now to look ahead, but what do you see as the future for this LCU men's program? Well, you know, I think we've got uh, three freshmen that, that played a lot of minutes this year. Uh, we got a lot of solid guys on the bench. And, you know, if you were ever at one of our home games, you, you saw a lot of guys at the end of the bench who came in that, that uh, were ineligible, not necessarily because of grades, but because of transfer rules that set out. And there's, I tell you what, there's a lot of talent on that bench uh, to where I look for great things next year out of this team. Absolutely. Coach Isles, congratulations on the season. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Nick, let's go ahead and send it back up to you. And thank you, Coach Isles. And again, Coach Perkins and the rest of that Crowley's Ridge assistant coaching staff for taking the time to come up here and talk with us as well. But again, unfortunately, LCU's season is done here for them. Again, like he mentioned, beating the top, or the top seed twice is a big accomplishment. You're not just lucky the first time. You are good. And we'll see if they, they just couldn't put it together again here today. 90 to 66 is the final here for that one. And congratulations once again for Crowley's Ridge to make the national tournament for the first time in school history as they improve to now 14 and 19 on the season. LCU will finish with an overall record of 10 and 21. A great outstanding year for them. Hopefully we will see them back next year and more to come as Coach Isles said. But again, that'll do it all here for the entire LC TV crew. You want to thank them. I'm Nick Jackson. We will take a quick break. And we will have the first of two championship games coming up next between College of the Ozarks, the one seed, versus the Voorhees Lady Tigers, the seven seed. That is coming up next here on Championship Sunday on LCTV. TV.